Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Friday. Uh, we made it through another week, all of us together, probably barely together with scotch tape and <clears throat> whatever we could get through. Uh, I'm Marisol Garcia. I'm the current vice president of AEA. I'm also a middle school social studies teacher out of the Isaac School District. And joining me today is Brendan Folan, our brand new government relations director. Um, we are so excited to welcome him to AEA. He comes with a wealth of knowledge and background working at the Capitol for how long were you there, Brendan? Uh, seven years. Seven years. So we made it through seven years of that. Um, so uh, we have him now. We're so excited. And we're going to start having these every Friday, give you an update of what happened. We're also going to give you some action items that we're going to want you to do and help us uh, get ready for the following week. Both the Senate Education Committee and the House Education Committee, where most of the bills regarding education are heard, happen on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. So we want to come to you live on Friday. This is going to stay on Facebook. You can go back and revisit it. You can share it at will. You can enjoy that. Um, and, and use it uh, to send to your colleagues or families to help them know what's going on. But welcome to our first of the year. Um, we got to make sure you sign up for the AEA legislative update. It comes out as well on Fridays since we don't know what's going to happen to the following week until Thursdays. So those are going to also come out on Fridays and uh, we'll put the link in the chat so you can sign up for those if you're not getting those. Um, but we'll, we'll start with what happened this week. Um, we know that it's essentially struggle, uh, chaos almost in every school and every classroom. We're just trying to do our very best and thank every, thank goodness. We have professionals uh, in the schools right now trying to keep things going. So I just thank you to everyone. Thank you to my son's teachers who are trying to do their very best and keep things going. Um, but it's also been a little crazy down at the Capitol. Uh, Monday was the first, well, actually the first speech the governor has given in a very, very long time, um, but it's his last state of the state. Uh, we were invited by uh, Representative Theran and represent, I'm sorry, Senator Theran and Representative Cano uh, to go down to the legislature. Unfortunately, they did not have any health requirements or mask mandates or pretty much anything. It was open for business. Uh, so Joe and I, um, as well as some staff members were down there watching from a, a, an office, keeping safe. Um, and so we just want to give you an update what the governor said. I, I really just very quickly, the governor barely mentioned COVID. Um, he did not mention schools or, or teachers. He mentioned schools, but we'll get to that. He didn't mention teachers, counselors, bus drivers. Um, he didn't mention paraprofessionals. He didn't mention how the amazing work that you have been doing. He didn't say thank you. He didn't say thank you to healthcare workers. So we want to take this opportunity to do that, but also wanted you to understand that that's the type of leadership that we have, we all know we've been dealing with for years, but unfortunately we will be dealing with as he finishes out his term this year. Um, did I miss anything from the state of the state that was kind of relevant? I don't think he talked too much, Brendan. No, nope, I think you hit it all. Yeah, he did mention that he loves school choice and he does want to continue with school choice, school choice for everyone. And maybe that's that's a, um, not a secret. He's been working on that for a long time and, and we will continue to ensure that uh, public schools are a priority as we know they are for most parents um, and educators in the state. Um, we wanted to bring up a, a term you're going to keep hearing over and over and over. It's called the AEL. You're going to hear that acronym. You know, we use acronyms every day, all day at, at the school sites. Uh, AEL stands for the Aggregate Expenditure Limit. Um, it's something we all need to be on guard for talking about and thinking about. And in that, uh, in that vein, Brendan, I'm going to let you real quickly try to help build background for our folks on what the AEL is. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so the Aggregate Expenditure Limit, or AEL, was originally created in 1980 uh, and approved by the voters after being referred to, uh, by the legislature. What it is, is it's a cap on school district spending based on enrollment and per pupil funding at the 1980 level. Um, districts are only allowed to exceed the cap if two thirds of each chamber of the legislature actually votes to override the limit. Um, this year, we're expected to exceed that limit by about $1.1 billion, meaning districts are gonna have to find a way to cut 15% of their budgets uh, by the end of this fiscal year if the legis legislature refuses to act. Um, and that's that's the quick on it. 
Yeah, I mean, bottom line for a lot of us, 1980 was a long time ago. I don't know if Brendan was alive. I was alive. I was listening to Ken take me to Funky Town. Um, it was a very different time in Arizona. Arizona looked very, very different in 1980. Um, and there, so, but it's it's 2022. And so we need to have these conversations. This does not, the AEL is just the ability to spend the money that districts have. So this isn't new money. The money is already sitting and waiting for the school district. They've planned a budget, they've passed a budget, it's ready to go out. If the AEL doesn't get some sort of adjustment or change to it, which the legislature can do, um, the, right away, school districts across the state are going to have to cut anywhere from 15 to 16%. It's a lot of money to finish out the school year, um, but we can do something about it. We can push the legislature to, to pass something. We can continue to put pressure on our school boards, have conversations with parents and help them understand, hey, we're, you know, we're kind of holding things together right now as we hold the whole planet deals with what's happening. We really need your help just kind of letting us get through this year and we definitely need a long-term solution. Um, so you're going to hear more about AEL. Um, AEA has set up a website to give you background. All the local presidents throughout the state were given um, a 10 minute meeting. We're hoping they're going to do that at your locals at site levels. All of our staff has information. Please reach out um, and use this as a beginning to have conversations with families and parents and help them understand that we're about to take a 16% pay cut the entire uh, public school system unless something is done. And that's not next year. That's this year. Okay. All right. We're going to go on to some more money news. And today at two o'clock, the governor presented his budget. Um, and so I'm going to have Brendan give you kind of an, a couple highs uh, and lows <laughs> of what the governor presented as far as his plan for schools this year. All right. So I'll start off with uh, the one high from the budget for uh, public schools is and uh, he is proposing an increase to $200 million for building renewal grants uh, to help school facilities and school capital. Um, that's an increase of about $183 million um, for this year, but it's all one, designated as one-time dollars, so it's not going to be uh, continued into further future years. Um, on to the, the not-so-great portions of the budget. Um, he's expecting or introducing uh, an increase in results-based funding of $60.8 million. So that's going to bring that to just under $130 million for an inequitable um, high-stakes testing-based program. Um, uh, he's bringing back Project Rocket under a new name with a new title. A um, few differences. Uh, it's called Operation Excellence. Any D or F rated schools will be uh, required to participate in any C rated school that is uh, has 60% free and reduced price lunch students or more um, can participate. They'll receive uh, about $150 more per pupil over three years. Um, and if they don't show improvement, they will the schools will be subject to uh, action by the State Board of Education, which could be uh, some type of administrative receivership so they could install new temporary leadership at the district. Um, he's also uh, advocating for another $20 million uh, in increasing funding for transportation for school privatization, privatization grants. Um, he pushed this in his budget last year and he's expanding it by 20 million this year. Um, another thing he's pushing is a, a summer camp for math, reading and civics. This, is, this was mentioned in his state of the state um, and this is actually $100 million, but it's all federal funding. There's no state funding going towards this. Um, and that's kind of the, the high level pieces of the budget. Yeah, so we can very clearly say that AEA has massive concerns with the proposed budget. As we all know, the governor can propose and the legislature comes with theirs and then we have some conversations. Um, however, I think one of the things we can all agree going through this pandemic within the classrooms and the school sites is that uh, Testing is not really going to uh, measure what these students have been through, nor measure the growth they've had or the opportunities that we haven't been able to give them because we've been dealing with a pandemic. Um, and so legitimate concerns before the pandemic regarding giving any sort of funding or additional money for testing, especially for students to do extremely well, and then putting extra um, bureaucratic kind of uh, handcuffs on schools that are already struggling. 
Um, we, we didn't hear anything about helping to deal with poverty, anything to do with teacher salaries. Um, we didn't hear anything in this budget that gives us a light of hope that the governor and the legislature are focused in on making our schools stronger for every student across the state. Um, right across the border in New Mexico, that governor already put has already put hers forward and it has a $3,000 teacher adjustment salary, which again would make it way more competitive to go to New Mexico than here. Um, and, and it is almost as if the governor is living in a bubble and so out of touch with what's happening in public schools, in communities with working class families who are just trying to keep things together after this long, almost two years of uncertainty um, that we've been living, we've been living with. Um, I, I, there also was no mention about massive COVID relief um, that any of the money that has come forward has come through from the federal level and more recently from the federal from the Biden administration that has given us the ability to get masks to have some sort of changes happening at our schools to avail money to create smaller class sizes, which I know is happening in my school district just trying to build a smaller class sizes so students can have you know, have extended learning opportunities or even just expanded what they're currently having um, in a smaller working. Um, so none of that's happening. That does not mean we are not going to keep lifting up voices. We're not going to keep pushing because this is it. This this is what we get to do. And, and I get so excited when it's like, well, no, we're not going down without a fight. We are going to keep fighting for our schools. And on that note, uh, the, the committees are starting right away. Tuesday, Monday is a holiday for a lot of us. Um, to honor the work of Martin Luther King and to bring up the issues surrounding voting rights um, on a federal level and on a state level. Um, I know tomorrow there's going to be a lot of events on 15th Street where we can, um, I, I know that Martin Luther King Jr.'s family is coming to Arizona to lift up the importance of voting rights issues. Um, but as soon as Sunday comes around and Monday comes around, uh, Tuesday is going to be our first education committee hearing. Um, and unfortunately, um, it's not a good a good agenda <laughs> on this one. And so I'm going to have Brendan tell you a little bit about what that agenda looks like. And um, then I'm going to come back and ask you to do something uh, for your colleagues and for the state. So as Marisol mentioned, uh, both House and Senate Education Committees are going to be, meet, be meeting on uh, Tuesday uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, every week. Um, so next week uh, is the first week they're going to be hearing bills. In Senate education, there's uh, one bill that I wanted to lift up for everybody, and that's a bill that appears to be targeting uh, ASBA, the School Boards Association, to prohibit school districts from using any tax dollars to pay for a membership in ASBA or the uh, National School Boards Association. Um, this is clearly um, some type of retaliatory action um, for uh, the School Boards Association pushing back on many of the unconstitutional actions that the legislature has attempted in recent years, including the budget uh, this past year. In House education, there are two bills um, that I wanted to lift up. Both are sponsored by Representative Udall. Um, one is that uh, it is House Bill 2025. This bill requires governing boards and uh, for school districts and charter governing bodies to develop and adopt um, policies for school visits, tours, and observations in all classrooms um, by parents of students that are currently enrolled in the school or parents who wish to uh, enroll their student in their child in that school. Um, the, the last bill, I am sure you've all heard about plenty. Um, it is the worst one on the agenda. It is House Bill 2112, also sponsored by Representative Udall. This is um, the, as it's been known in uh, around the area, the CRT bill. Um, so this bill prohibits uh, the teaching that one race, ethnic group, or sex is superior um, to any others, or that uh, it also prohibits the teaching of anything that individuals should feel discomfort, guilt, anguish, or any other form of psychological distress because of their race, ethnicity, or sex. Anyone found in uh, violation of the bill will be subject to disciplinary action by the State Board of Education that could include the suspension or revocation of your teaching certificate. Um, and any school district uh, or charter school where their teachers are found to be in violation will also be subject to a $5,000 fine. So this bill is uh, aimed at, gag at trying to gag teachers from teaching. Um, I'll let Marisol kind of talk more about that. 
Yeah, uh, I'll be very clear. The bill is awful. This is not the first time. The exact same bill Representative Udall ran last year. She was unable to get it passed, so she shoved it into the budget. And so we did help file a lawsuit. We funded a lawsuit against the burbs or the budget-related uh, budget bills. Um, it was thrown out of court, and so she's bringing it back again at her very first uh, committee hearing as chair of the Education Committee. It is highly, highly um, disappointing that a representative, a public school educator, would bring forward this bill, which has been shopped around the country in North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, as recently as Indiana and in Missouri. The only intent of this bill is to make it very clear that we uh, don't trust educators, A, and B, we're running for office. So we need to make some news and create this kind of drama that is happening. I'm an, a social studies teacher. I've teach, taught American history for 15 years. This does not happen in classrooms. And if something like this did happen in a classroom, it would be dealt with at a site level, uh, at a district level, and it would be taken care of. This is a manufactured crisis that we know is not happening. I'm a trained professional. I went and got my additional degrees after getting my bachelor's so I could go back and be a, an educator. I'm full well aware of American history as well as what is appropriate to teach, as well as my main focus in the classroom is teaching critical thinking skills for my students. And so this is something that has been manufactured that is not happening. Unfortunately, it is really important that we bring um, educator voices to this, parent voices to this, as well as community leaders to this. This is not a bill that Arizona, again, will make national news, will be a national embarrassment. So again, this bill is House Bill 2112, correct, Brendan? Yep, 2112. Yes. We're going to put the link in there. We need you to get onto request to speak, RTS, and let them know no. We also need to get on to and send a letter to your local legislators and let them know this is ridiculous. This is not what we need to do. Um, the second bill that, uh, the first bill that Brendan talked about was um, HB, I'm sorry, was the first bill was, I'm sorry. Senate Bill 1011. Senate Bill 1011, and that's again, you know, just again, politicizing issues. I cannot re-emphasize re enough this session that everyone is running for office. And they are looking for bills, policies, and to put in their political flyers. Schools are best ran by parents and educators and community members, not by politicians who are trying to get Twitter likes, who are trying to get polling numbers, who are trying to get donors. Public schools, the most important people are the students, the educators, and the parents. And we can work together as a community to ensure that our schools are strong. Politicians need to stay out of that. And I believe that not only as a mother, but as a trained professional and very proud trained professional. All right, I think we covered everything. I think there's one thing we wanted to mention just to cut, just in case it comes across your social media feed. And that is that today the, the treasury department did push back against the governor using federal COVID money to divert from health and safety precautions. Uh, the governor started using that money to ask parents, hey, if you don't wanna wear a mask, we'll give you money and you can go to another school. Um, and so the treasury department, thank you representative Stanton, uh, was asked to get involved and look at that as proper use of money. This is another case where the governor is politicizing issues that should be, we he, instead of making sure that our students are safe, the educators are safe and our communities are safe. All three are connected. And right now the governor is trying to score points with, you know, to get on TV and to score Twitter feed stuff and, and donors and just, just what we're not really interested in. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us this Friday. You're gonna start getting legislative updates from Brendan. He's down there, our capable kind of leader down at the Capitol. Uh, please be uh, checking our Facebook feed, our Twitter feed, our Instagram, all of our social media to make sure you're getting updates. Stay ready, but most importantly, take care of yourself this weekend really find um, some space to get a warm blanket and some tea uh, and enjoy the nice cool weather um, and take care of yourself and your family. We are all thinking of you and please be safe. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Thanks everyone.